In this video, I will be doing my eToro portfolio update for November of 2023. This has been a very good month in the stock market with the S&P 500 finishing up 8.97% and the Nasdaq finishing up about 11.6%. So a very good month for both indices. This month, America's inflation came in at 3.2% and the CME watch tool is now predicting with a 99.9% .9 chance that the Fed will keep the rate the same at the December 13th meeting. This month, UK inflation fell to 4.6% year over year, which was down from 6.7% in the prior month, which is good news that it is finally starting to come down. Anyway, as usual, in my eToro portfolio update, I'll show what I closed, then show any cash I added, my current stats, and then I'll show all my assets I hold, talking about what I bought and show the profit and loss on each. If it's your first time watching my channel, then my name's Ollie, and on this channel, we discuss all things related to personal finance and investing. So please don't forget to subscribe. And if you get any value from this video, then I'd really appreciate a thumbs up as it helps the channel massively to reach more people. Now, before we get stuck in, I must be clear that I am not a financial advisor and nothing in this video is intended to be financial advice. And if you want financial advice, you should seek a suitably licensed professional. At the end of the day, I am just a guy on YouTube, so you should always do your own research because this video is just for entertainment purposes only and past performance is not indicative of any future results. Also, if you're not already signed up to eToro and decide to sign up while watching this video, then I have an affiliate link in the description below, which if you sign up using it, then I will get a kickback and it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it really helps support this channel. So anyway, for the month of November, I actually didn't deposit any money. Uh, after cashing out a load of copy trade positions last month, I haven't yet put all that money to work. And I also didn't close out any positions this month. So if we move on to the stats, if you can see we finished October around the around the 117 mark. Um, and then we finished November at 1358. So that's roughly a gain of about 17 to 18k in a month. Now we have come back down slightly uh, and today at the time of recording we are at 136 so a very good month overall and if we look at the stats i made 13.34 percent in november bringing the total to the year for 58.26 percent so moving on to my actual portfolio starting with the worst and moving to the best bio nanogenomics as mentioned the last few months i'm going to stop talking about this unless something notable happens similarly with dash I'm just going to cash this out in the next crypto bull run, which will be potentially next year. And I will likely close that one at a loss. Uh, next on my portfolio update is ADA Cardano. That's down 83.2%. In November, this did have a very good month uh, and was up around 27%. And as we've gone into December, this has continued rallying. And all of this rallying is down to the potential Bitcoin spot ETF being approved. And... It has just sent some of the cryptos parabolic and you'll see later that Bitcoin has just topped 44K today, which is just crazy and I was not expecting it to do that. So anyway, ADA Cardano, I've not bought any of this in ages. Uh, I'm gonna hold this till the next crypto bull run and hopefully I'll sell it in profit, but who knows, I may have to sell this one at a loss, we shall see. Uh, next on my portfolio update is NEO. This is down 78.8%. In November, this finished the month pretty much where we started. In November, NEO delivered 15,959 vehicles, which was a dip of around 1% month over month, but deliveries did rise 12.6% year over year. NEO are apparently eliminating 10% of staff positions as NEO said it needed to improve efficiency and ensure adequate resources. Uh, as I've mentioned in the past, I don't really like the idea of Chinese stocks and I'm still undecided about taking a loss on this one. For now, it's hopefully bottomed out. So I'll see where we go from here. So for now, this is a hold. Next on my portfolio update is PayPal and PayPal was up in November. This was after their earnings came out where earnings per share came in at $1.30 beating by seven cents. 
Oh, do you know what? I'll put me on the on here so you can see me. Hello. Uh, and then revenue came in at 7.4 billion, beating by 20 million. This month in other news, uh, PayPal disclosed that it received a subpoena. Sub I don't know that, that it received a subpoena from the SEC relating to its PayPal USD stablecoin, which PayPal launched in August and is backed by US dollar deposits, short-term US treasuries, and similar cash equivalents. As mentioned in previous videos, while I hope this recovers somewhat in the future, I feel like I may struggle to make a profit on this one due to my average buy price being 205. So for now, this is a hold. Next on my portfolio update is Lemonade. This one's down 71.86%. This was up in November, jumping around roughly 70 to 80% after releasing their earnings. Their earnings per share came in at minus 88 cents, which was a beat by six cents, and revenue came in at 114.5 million, beating by 9.72 million. But they also issued strong guidance for Q4, bringing them closer to posting a profit. And in other good news this month, Lemonade reached 2 million active worldwide customers. So anyway, for now, this is a hold and then hopefully I'll cash this out at a position not so bad in the future. Next on my portfolio update is Square and that's down 65.23%. In November, this was up massively after they released earnings uh, and it jumped like 19% after hours. Earnings per share came in at minus 5 cents, beating by 6 cents, and revenue came in at 5.62 billion, beating by 190 million. They also announced a $1 billion share buyback and they stated they should achieve the rule of 40 in 2026, which means the company's gross profit and adjusted operating income margins add up to 40. I've not added to Square in a while, and for now, this is a hold. Now, you may have noticed that I've been using Seeking Alpha in this video, which is the site I currently have up on screen, and it is a tool that I personally think is great for researching stocks and keeping up with the news on them. Now, they were kind enough to give me a free membership to their site. They haven't paid me to promote them, but I do have an affiliate link in the description below. So if any of you sign up for the paid membership, then I will get a kickback. If you haven't used their site before, then they have lots of great features for analyzing stocks many of which are very easy to digest, like these ratings on the side here. And you can see all about their earnings and compare them against their peers very easily. So I recommend going to check them out. And if you go and use my link in the description at the moment, then you can get a discount of the first year where it is currently $167 and is normally 239. So I recommend going to check them out after this video. So next on my portfolio update is Warner Brothers Discovery. As mentioned in previous videos, I didn't buy this and it ended up in my portfolio due to something through a copy position. Uh, I don't really want it. Uh, I'm just waiting for the market to recover somewhat and then I will close it out. Next on my portfolio update is Corsair Gaming. That's down 55%. This was up ever so slightly in November. They announced earnings on November the 7th and Earnings per share came in line at 13 cents and revenue was a beat by 14.71 million coming in at 363.2 million. I've not added to this one for ages and for now this is a hold for me. Next on my portfolio update is Flare. As mentioned in previous videos, I've been airdropped this just because I held XRP at some point in the past. I don't really know much about it, but I do know that while I keep the position open, that eToro will keep sending me tokens, so there's no point turning down something free. So yeah, I'm just leaving that one there for now. Next on my portfolio update is XRP, and this is down 35.9%. In November, this was up, but as kind of leveled out around the 61 cents mark, which is surprising because some of the other cryptos have rallied today and this is staying rather flat. There was this big spike here, which was down to some fake news that there was potentially gonna be an XRP ETF listed, which is why it then soon came crashing down afterwards. Uh, for now, this is a hold and I will cash this out in the next crypto bull run. Next on my portfolio update is EasyJet and that's down 32.71%. This was up massively in November as they announced good earnings. EasyJet's earnings before interest and tax for its financial year to end September came in at 476 million pounds, 
which was above the £473 million expected. The group also said it would propose a dividend of 4.5 pence per share at its annual general meeting later in December. EasyJet holidays profits grew 221%, delivering £122 million in profit before tax and is expected to grow over 35% in fiscal year 2024. I'm going to close this out when it reaches profit, but for now, this is a hold. Next on my portfolio update is Disney, and this is down 21.18%. This went up massively in November, but has started to come back down now. They announced earnings this month, and earnings per share came in at 82 cents, beaten by 11 cents, and revenue came in at 21.24 billion, missing by 170 million. The fourth quarter earnings did top profit expectations, as cost cutting accelerated and streaming subscriber growth was better than expected. And the company's on track to hit 7.5 billion in annualized cost savings, which is $2 billion more than expected. In other news this month, CEO Bob Iger reiterated that he plans to step down in 2026. This was a Rona play and I will be looking to cash this one out when it reaches profitability. Next on my portfolio update is Ethereum. This has had a very good month, which has just rallied off the back of the potential Bitcoin spot ETF being approved. Um, and you can see here today that it's just spiked reaching, it must be a 52 week high of 2,284 roughly. I bought $200 in November and I've actually bought another $200 now that we've come into December. As I've said in previous videos, I want to get this up to two Ethereum. So I'm not far off now and hopefully I'll do that in the coming months. Anyway, how has your portfolio been performing this month? And do you think this is the start of a new bull market or do you think we are gonna hit a recession next year? I'd love to know, so let us know in the comments and I reply to each and every one. Next on my portfolio update is Meta and I'm down 1.31% on this. This was up for the month of November but has started to come back down since. This month, Meta has rolled out a new feature that will allow users to link their Facebook and Instagram accounts to Amazon so that they can buy products directly from within the social media apps without having to leave them. Also this month, Meta introduced two new AI-based features for video editing called Emu Video and Emu Edit, which can carry out tasks based on text instructions. There's not been a huge deal of other news on Meta this month. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I am going to close this one out when I've made more profit on it. Next on my portfolio update is Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings. This one is up 1.21%. This was up in November and has just gone up massively in the last couple of days in December. They reported earnings at the start of November and earnings per share came in at 76 cents, beating by 8 cents and revenue came in at 2.54 billion which was a beat by 30 million. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I said I'd close this one out, but when it became profitable, that is still the plan and I have a take profit set, but I'd rather make a bit more than $12 after having this open since 2020. So hopefully this will close out in the coming months. Next on my portfolio update is Amazon. This one's up 4.47%. This was up after their earnings in October and has continued to rally since. This month, Amazon's planned purchase of the robot vacuum maker Roomba is set to get unconditional approval from the EU. Also, in other news, Amazon's cloud computing unit and pharmaceutical company Amgen will work together to create solutions based on generative AI in order to help with the discovery and development of medicines. And this month, Oppenheimer picked Amazon as its top large cap pick for 2024 and it expects margins to rise in both e-commerce and its Amazon Web Services unit and they increase their price target up to $200 from 170. I do want to continue growing this position but I am just putting my money in other places at the moment. Next on my portfolio update is Google and this is up 15.82% in November this was up but has come back down since going into December. Also in other news, Google is experimenting with two additional generative AI features in YouTube, which sound pretty cool. The first one is where the company is experimenting with an AI that organizes large comment sections of long form videos into different themes where people will be able to select an option and sort by topics. 
Also, the other one is where they are experimenting with a conversational AI tool, which lets users get answers to questions about the video they are watching and also recommendations for related content. I haven't bought any Google in a while. I may buy some if it pulls back a bit further. Next on my portfolio update is Tesla. And overall, I'm up 18% roughly on this one. In November, this was up and has come down slightly as we've gone into December. Obviously, the Cybertruck was released this month, which looks absolutely insane, and I really want one. If you haven't seen this one video, then you really need to see it because it's just ridiculous. It's a drag race between a Porsche 911 and a Cybertruck, and the Cybertruck annihilates it but at the same time is pulling the same car that it beat. It's just insane. So that's why I want a Cybertruck. They're just ridiculous. But if you haven't seen the launch event, then I highly recommend giving it a watch. Also in other news this month, Tesla said they are willing to set up an EV factory in India if the government approves a concessional duty of 15% on imported vehicles in the company's first two years of operations in India. In other news, according to Reuters, Tesla has a plan to build its $25,000 EV at its Berlin factory as Elon Musk announced this to employees there this month. I am very bullish on Tesla and I will continue to build out this position over time. Next on my portfolio update is Jay Nemesis and he's up 18%. He is the only copy position I still have open and I am still debating closing this one out. Uh, he had a good month up 14.26%, but that's only brought his yearly total to 2.44%. So it shows he was at a negative before. Um, so yeah, I am still on the fence with this one. Next on my portfolio update is Microsoft, and this is up 30.5%-ish. This had an amazing month and actually reached all time highs of around 300 and what's that, 83-ish. Obviously, there was a lot of kerfuffle this month with Sam Altman, who is the chief executive of OpenAI and Microsoft funds OpenAI. And this month in a five day period, it saw Sam Altman being fired, then hired by Microsoft, then returning back to OpenAI with a new board of directors. After loads of the employees at OpenAI stated they would walk out if he was not rehired. In other news, Microsoft showed off its first two in-house processors at its annual Ignite conference, one which will be focused on AI and the other focused on cloud computing as they look to compete with semiconductor giants such as Nvidia and AMD and reduce their reliance on them. Also this month, Microsoft declared a 75 cents per share quarterly dividend, which will be payable on March the 14th for shareholders a record on the 15th. I haven't bought any Microsoft this month, but I do want to continue to build this position out over time. Next on my portfolio update is the big tech copy portfolio. This one's up 62%. Um, in November, this had a very good month, up 9.14%, bringing the yearly total up to 58.28%. I am keeping my money here for now, but I have debated just moving it into a NASDAQ ETF as probably a lot of the stocks will be very similar. Next on my portfolio update is Bitcoin. And this has just been on an absolute tear after the potential of a Bitcoin spot ETF being approved. So you can see on the four hour chart, we've just broken out of this channel here and we're just trying to find a place to stop now. I want to buy more, but when I see this, I do get a little bit wary that we are just a little bit overextended. I think a lot of this action that we're seeing here is down to the mainstream media now picking up on this and people are FOMOing into it. And normally when this happens, people will take profit and we could see a pullback. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a correction from here. Some people are saying this could continue until the ETF is approved and then we may see a pullback afterwards and then potentially see another spike at the halving. This is where I have been putting most of my money that I took out of the copy trade positions that I had previously. Because in my personal opinion, I feel that like Bitcoin is going to do very well towards the end of 2024, maybe early 2025. And if I was to hazard a guess, this is not financial advice. And in my personal opinion, which could be completely wrong, I suspect we will hit over 100K at the end of 2024 or early 2025. 
So that's why I am putting a lot of money into Bitcoin at the moment. Next on my portfolio update, AMD is up 73.4%. This was up in November, but has come back down a little bit since. There wasn't a huge deal of news on AMD this month, but uh, they do have an AI event on Wednesday, which is tomorrow, where they will be formally launching their MI300 data center GPU, which will give them better competition with NVIDIA. Um, and AMD said they expect the MI300 to generate more than $2 billion in sales in 2024. For now, this is a hold unless it pulls back quite a bit more. Next on my portfolio update is Apple and this is up 104.46%. This was up massively in November, 13%. And this was off the back of their earnings where earnings per share came in at $1.46, beating by seven cents. And revenue came in at 89.49 billion, which was in line. Also in news this month, Wells Fargo thinks that the outcome of the ongoing antitrust trial against Google may even result in Apple entering the search market. And in other news, Apple has delayed its planned release of its Vision Pro headset from January to March due to complications with the design and difficulties in manufacturing. And also they do plan to release a cheaper version of their Vision Pro headset when the second generation is unveiled, which may be as soon as 2025. I do want to build out my position in Apple, but I'm just putting my money elsewhere at the moment. Next on my portfolio update is Royal Caribbean, and this is up 111.29%. There wasn't a great deal of news on this this month, but I have a take profit set and we are just getting closer to that. So I'm just waiting for that to hit and then I will cash this out. And next on my portfolio update is the in the game copy portfolio, which is up 194.18%. And in November, this had an amazing month up 11.49%, bringing the yearly total up to 58.68%. And this is a long-term hold. Anyway, if you got this far, I want to thank you so, so much for watching. Do you think this is the start of a bull market? Or do you think we are gonna hit a recession next year? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And where do you think Bitcoin's price will reach in December? Let us know your thoughts on that in the comments. And if you're new to eToro, then you may also be wondering how you can get started. And if so, then I have a video that explains everything here. So make sure you watch that one next. It's been Ollie from Get Geek Finance. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.